All right, boys and girls, sorry for the last minute notice, but I have been called to go attend a meeting. So now in this video, I'm going to go over page 231 and 232, problems 3 through 12. So we're working on comparisons still. I know that you've probably watched the video of Mrs. Connor, and these comparisons are using either multiplication or division to help us solve. So let's take a look. In example number three, it looks like we're comparing the number of magazines that Connor has to the number of magazines Kristen has. So we're comparing Connor to Kristen. That's our comparison. Connor has 77 magazines. So they've told us how many Connor has. That is seven times as many magazines that Kristen has. How many magazines N, so that's the variable they want us to use, does Kristen have? So the unknown here is the number that Kristen has. But we've been told that Connor has 77, and that is seven times as many as Kristen, which they've told us we will use N for the unknown. So now we're thinking of a missing factor problem here, and we could use division. We could. We could set up partial quotients. However, many of you probably know this basic multiplication fact because you saw the sevens doubled and you were thinking, oh, well, when you multiply seven times 11, you would get 77. So 77 is equal to seven times 11. Therefore, N is equal to 11 magazines. And that is how many Kristen has. Let's look at example number four. Eric completed 75 math problems. That is five times as many math problems as Katie. So we're comparing the work that Eric did to the work that Katie did. And then the question is, how many math problems M did Katie complete? So we're using this variable and we're solving for Katie. She is the unknown in this problem. So Eric completed 75 and that was five times as many as Katie. So now 75 is equal to five times as many as Katie, which they told us to use M for Katie. And now we again have an unknown factor problem. So here we could use partial quotients where we divide and we have five going into number 75. Now I do not know how many times five will go into 75 off the top of my head, but using partial quotients, five can go into 75. I could take away a group of 10, five times 10, and I know that five times 10 is 50. And when I subtract, that would leave me with 25 remaining. And oh, I know that five times five is equal to 25. So five times five, 25, nothing remaining. I'm gonna add up my partial quotients, 10 plus five, so that would be 75 is equal to 5 multiplied by 10 plus 5 is 15. Therefore, M is equal to 15, and that's math problems. Let's look at example number 5, moving right along. Claire counted 117 different colors at the paint store. That is nine times as many as the number that James counted. So we're comparing Claire to James. Right away, I think James is the unknown here because it says how many different colors C did James count? So James is the one that we do not know. So now I'm going to look back at this problem. Claire counted 117 different colors. That is, we said is means that you're talking about an equal sign, that part of the equation. Nine times as many as James, which is the letter C. So now we're thinking of an unknown factor, but we could use the inverse operation of division here. How many times will nine go into 117 without going over? Well, it could take away a group of 10 because nine times 10 is equal to 90. When I do that subtraction, seven minus zero is seven. And then I can't do this, so I'm gonna borrow. So it's 11, take away nine. 9, 10, 11, that leaves me with 27. I know that 9 times 3 is equal to 27. Subtract, nothing remaining. I'm going to add up these partial quotients. 10 plus 3 is equal to 13. 117 is equal to 9 times 10 plus 3, 13. Therefore, C is equal to 13. 
Now, if we take a second, boys and girls, and think about this, we're saying that James counted 13, right? This is James. And doesn't that make sense that Claire counted nine times as many? Because nine times 13 is equal to the number that Claire counted, which was 117 different colors. So we know that our work is correct. Let's look at number six. We're comparing dominoes that two kids have. We have Elisa and we have Stan, and we're comparing dominoes. Elisa has 153 dominoes. That is three times as many as Stan. So we want to know how many does Stan have? So Stan is the unknown here. Well, if 153 is three times as many as Stan, let's see what they want us to use for Stan, the letter D. Then that would be three times what number would give me 153? Wow, I could use partial quotients. And again, boys and girls, when you're using partial quotients, you really want to look at the first two numbers. This is just a good review of partial quotients. So looking at 15, and you want to think in your brain, how many times does 3 go into the number 15? Well, I know that 3 times 5 is 15, but let's wait. I have an extra number here. So instead of multiplying by 5, I'm going to fill in that extra number with a 0. So 3 times 50 would be 150. When I subtract, I'm left with 3. And now I need to think how many times will 3 go into 3? Three? 3 times 1, because 3 times 1 is 3. And that would leave me with 0 remaining. So I'm going to add my partial quotients, 50 plus 1. 153 is equal to 3 times 51. So Stan has 51 dominoes. Let's look at the next problem. Justin practiced piano for 8 hours. His sister practiced for 12 hours, which was 3 times as many hours as Justin practiced. So we're comparing Justin to his sister. So some students get really overwhelmed because these problems are very wordy, but if you just follow these steps that I'm thinking aloud, then I think that you can break apart this problem. And even if we have to draw a picture or a bar diagram to help us solve, we can do that. So let's read it again, knowing that we're comparing Justin to his sister. He practiced for eight hours. So if I wanted to draw a bar diagram down here, I could write J for Justin and I could write sis for sister, because those are the two we're comparing. And Justin practiced for H hours, so he's the unknown. So I'm going to put an H here in this box for unknown. His sister practiced for 12 hours, which was three times as many hours as Justin practiced. So one, two, Three times as many, because that's what they told us in the problem, correct? Three times as many as Justin. There's Justin, there's Sis, three times as many. Now, they told us up here that she practiced for 12 hours. So this number right here, these three times as many, is equal to 12. So could you solve, then, for the number of hours that Justin practiced? Well, if you're thinking about this as an equation now, some of you read this problem and you went right to the equation step. You were thinking 12 is equal to 3 times as many as H, which is what we've been doing up here. And you know that, just like in this bar diagram, what number could you multiply by 3 to equal 12? Exactly. Four. So Justin practiced for four hours. Again, if you plug that into your bar diagram, four plus four plus four would be equal to 12. And again, that would be how many hours his sister practiced because she practiced three times as much as him. Let's look at number eight. Mary practiced violin for two hours. All right, violin, her brother practiced trombone, T times as long. So now we're comparing Mary to her brother. 
So you might want to think like who practiced or what information did they give us here? So Mary practiced for two hours and her brother practiced the trombone T times or eight hours. Well, if you were to count up, if you know this one's two, then you could count eight hours. Two, four, six, and eight. How many times is long? You want to find out how many times is long Mary's brother practiced trombone. So how many more times do you see there? Well, I see one here and I see one, two, three, four. So four times as many. Some of you think of this as an equation, like Mrs. Connor and even Mrs. Body modeled up here. If you thought of it as an equation, you'd be thinking two times T is equal to eight. And again, you would know that that missing factor T would be equal to four. So two different ways to arrive at the same answer. Let's look at question number nine on the back. Dave is making soup that includes 12 cups of water and three cups of broth. How many times as much water as broth will be in the soup? Draw a bar diagram and write and solve an equation. So we've got water and broth that we're comparing. Water and broth. So let's draw a bar diagram. Now, the smaller amount would be the broth. Three cups of broth. Now, this one includes 12 cups of water. But let's look at the question. They want to know how many times as much water as broth will be used in the soup. Well, if you know that broth is three cups, then let's find out how many more. We've got to count all the way up to 12 to see how many more blocks we need in our diagram. So that's three, six, nine, and 12. So how many more or how many times as much water as broth will be needed in the soup? I count one, two, three, four times as many. Or four times as much would make more sense here. Exactly. Now, some of you, again, you think of this as an equation. That's just the first thing that comes to your mind. That's actually how my brain works, too. Um, 12 cups is equal to what number? Let's put N for the unknown times 3. So then you were thinking, okay, what number would I multiply by 3 to equal 12? And, of course, N would be equal to 4. Moving on, number 10. Trevor wants to buy three light fixtures that cost $168 each. So he wants to buy three. They're $168 each. He has $500. Does he have enough money to buy the three light fixtures? So does he have enough? Okay. Well, to me, I would go right ahead and add 168 three times to find out how much these three are going to cost. 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 8 more is 24. Let's put the 4 here, carry the 2. 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. 1, 2, 3, plus 2 more is 5. So he needs $504. However, he only has 500. So what he still needs Let's say Trevor needs four more dollars to buy the lights. Number 11. Miranda has four times as many leaves in her collection as Joy. Joy has 
13 more leaves than Armani. Armani has 10 leaves in his collection. How many leaves does Miranda have in her collection? Explain. So this is tricky because they give us three people in this comparison. We're talking about Miranda, Joy, and Armani. But start with what they give you. Who, which total do you know for sure? Well, I think that's Armani because they told you how many he has. He has 10 leaves. So I would put A for Armani equals 10. Then I would solve for Joy. So kind of working backwards. Joy has 13 more than Armani. So Joy is going to be 10 plus 13, which I know is 23. So Joy has 23. Now Miranda has four times as many leaves. So four times as many as who? Oh, Joy. So this is going to be 23 times four. I can do that multiplication. You could either do repeated addition or you could break this apart into 20 and three. Four times 20, this is a good review of your area model. Four times two is eight, add on the zero, that's 80. Four times three is 12, 80 plus 12 would give me a total of 92. Miranda has 92 leaves. Last question, number 12. Jordan needs $9,240 for her first year of college tuition. So college tuition, that's how much she needs. Each of her two grandfathers, each of two grandfathers said they would match what she saves. She has eight years before she goes to college. How much does Jordan need to save on her own each year? to have enough for her first year with the help, oh, with the help from her two grandfathers. Okay, so to me, it sounds like Jordan plus two are paying for college, two grandfathers. So what I would do first, I would take the 9,240 and I would divide that by eight years because she has eight years until she has to go. Let's see if I can have some room here. When we do that division, let's set this up. I'm just going to use a whiteboard. Run out of room. Okay. So 9,240. Now, this looks tricky, but we know that you can multiply 8 times 1,000. And that would give you a total of 8,000. Subtract. You would have 1,240. Then we're going to continue with our division. How many times will 8 go into 12 without going over? So let's take away 8 times... Again, we're thinking of this number right here. How many times will 8 go into 12? And that would be 1. However, we have these two digits here. So instead of multiplying 8 times 1, because that would just give us 8, we need 800. So let's multiply by 100. So now we're taking away 800. Subtract. 0 minus 0 is 0. 4 take away 0. We're left with 4. Can't do this. Going to regroup. 12 take away 8 is 4. Now we're left here with 440. So what do we do? We look at the first two digits again and think, how many times will 8 go into 44? Well, I know that 8 times 5 is 40. But I still have this 0, so I'm going to multiply by 50. So that would be 400, subtract, left with 40. And again, we know our basic fact. How many times will 8 go into 40? That'd be 8 times 5, which would be equal to 40. Subtract, we're left with 0. That was a lot. However, we know that we now need to add these partial quotients together. So we have 1,150. Five. However, I think there's one more step. We're almost finished. Let's take the 1,155 
and divide that by 3. Why am I dividing it by 3? Well, because Jordan and her two grandfathers are paying for college. So let's set up 1,155. We're almost there, guys. Divide by 3. This is a smaller number, so if you felt really overwhelmed with the last one, dividing 9,240, then take a look at this. So first we want to think, okay, how many times does 3 go into these first two numbers? 11. Well, 3 times 4 is 12. That's too many. So let's multiply 3 times 3, because 3 times 3 would be 9. That's pretty close. But I have two more digits here, so I'm going to add on two zeros. So 3 times 300 would be 900. Subtract 5 minus 5 is, or 5 minus 0 is 5. 5 minus 0 is 5. And 11 minus 9 is 2. Now I have 255. So again, let's look at the first two digits and think how many times will 3 go into 25? Great. 8. 3 times 8 is 24. But I have this digit, so instead of multiplying by 8, I'm actually multiplying by 80. 3 times 80 is going to leave me with 240. When I subtract, 5, take away 0 is 5, and 5 minus 4 is 1. Now I need to think about how many times will 3 go into 15? You got it, 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is equal to 15, subtract, we're left with 0. So this is our final answer. When we add these partial quotients together, 300 plus 80 plus 5, that will tell us how much Jordan needs to save in the first year so that her two grandfathers can match her amount. So going back to this problem, that was a doozy. Jordan would need to save a total of $385. Whew. She's sleepy after that one. Poor Jordan. Good job, guys. I know that was a long video. And again, I apologize for not being able to attend our math meeting, but I will see you tomorrow morning.